Hello there everyone and welcome back, of course, to episode 3 of us playing as the uh, Commonwealth of Britain. Or, it's just Commonwealth of Britain really, but England, Scotland, Ireland, fully Ireland, um, under us. So, uh, we're going to talk about the raid on Cumberland though, uh, after we do civilian oversight. Tonight marked the appointment, appointed night of the raid. A brave submarine crew operating underneath Holbrook took to the sea and carefully made their way to the harbor where the Canadian fleet was docked for the night. Due to the lax nature of the recent conflict in the Atlantic, there seemed to be no real attempt to post adequate sentries to stand guard against something like this. As Holbrook surfaced, um, he fired two salvos of torpedoes into the HMCS Cumberland. The first salvo was ineffective, bouncing out the hull, but the second salvo ripped a massive hole into the starboard hull immediately, causing it to list over and over to begin to get a flood. Following the display of fireworks, Holbrook and his crew submerged and began their escape back to safety of the English waters. In and out, clean! Uh, we're still in Spain here. The second Valkyrie gets kicked off, and the German Empire is probably going to win no matter what. It's pretty easy for them to win. Um, but yeah, we're here trying to get more army XP. Like we said at the end of the last episode, we're going to go through uh, these guys, maybe, and uh, push south. But this morning, we received a telegram from the government of Iceland demanding reparations for the sinking of the HMCS Cumberland. They claim to have indisputable evidence against us that would prove that we were the ones responsible for the loss of their ship. Our crew uh, claimed they weren't in and out without being detected. How should we respond to this outrageous accusation? No, I don't think so. IRA sabotage, yeah. The IRA has bombed one of our factories in an attempt to sabotage our industry. Darn, well, 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 well. They'll get theirs eventually. And military industry in Northern England. Military industry, if you want to do this again, please go right ahead. Indian comrades, if you want to do this, please go right ahead. Okay. They want to continue attacking us, that's fine with us. We need more medium tanks. Light tanks, uh, at this point, we don't need very many more light tanks right now. Um, improved light tanks, we'll take them off. Yeah, we need a lot of these tanks, though. So. Keep it a one. We're fine for now. We need more aluminum and chromium. I like that this only takes steel, though, which is very, very good for us. Uh, doing all three, which is very nice, very, very nice. What else we got here? Uh, Supermarine Syndicate, huh? What is this? Seaplane Orton. Ooh, pretty cool. Can you go in here? Can they pierce us? Ye no. Ah. It is back to war again. Look at that. Oh, and we are losing. Winning. Here. This is a pen for now. That's fine. We'll do whatever we can to make sure we win. Cutting them off here would be very nice. Not really not really cutting them off. And Fate of Ireland. We already did this one. Also, I decided to just eat up the Netherlands eventually. We might release a United Benelux, perhaps. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Hey, he's becoming a panzer leader, finally. Better fuel, more rubber. Also, we're just flying still on Iceland, so that's why it's taking us a while. Which is fine with us. Spies report back from Canada. Our spies in Canada have reported back to us about the public opinion in Canada towards Iceland sinking, since the sinking of the Cumberland. In contrast to what we thought, the surprise attack did not discourage them, but rather emboldened them. They remain not resolute in the commitment to Iceland. How should we proceed? Blockade them. Look, if we go to war with the Entente first, that's fine, whatever. Heavy HMGs. We're going to go and research this ahead of time. I want to start working on some better stuff here. German-Japanese war. Alright, interesting. If these guys could help support the attack, that'd be fantastic. There you go. That's what we'd like to see. Alright, no. Ireland, stop it. Uh, let's see. Cold Coast, Cape to Cairo, begin a foothold on there. Eh, why not? Do we have an expiration date, though? No, we don't, so which is very, very good for us. Definitely becoming a Panzer leader. So working on the medium tanks. Can you burn clear war on Siam? That's fine, whatever. All right, Thorio. So how much longer do we even go to war the Republic of Ireland? Ice Ireland. Blockade of Iceland. Our blockade over the course of the last week has been a great success. All trade with the Royalists in Canada has ceased. On Iceland, our intelligence reports no action from the Canadians to relieve their trapped squadron of sailors in Iceland. We have Iceland right where we want them. A successful operation. Very good. Stop it. Um, you know what? We're going to do this one anyways. We could have intelligence because we are going to need to invade Iceland. Because Denmark did join the third, uh, uh, the Reichspact. Yeah. Surprised they haven't won already. Huh. Riots in Ireland. Did enemy people try to turn out for protests and demonstrations against the rule in Ireland? The protests turned into rioting, causing much damage and acts of vandalism and injuring many. They can try it. No one's going to care in the end, though. Oh, would you look at that? Keep going in. 
Delivering the demands. Following a two-week period of blockade, the merchants and traders must be desperate for some ability to resume trade. We have proposed a treaty uh, for them. In this deal, we press our claim to the waters, which naturally give us a sizable portion of all profits that come from fish caught by Icelandic fishermen. Any disagreements with said uh, policy would be seen as an attack against our sovereign waters and be subject for military intervention. Force the hand. Ah, oh, beautiful. Blackburn Union, no? Very good. Beautiful. Let's go here. I soon reject our demands. With the rejection of our terms, we now have a justifiable excuse to land forces on the island. They have no military of any means and would have no means to resist us. Should we land a large force in display of power or use our resources elsewhere and deploy a smaller force? Display of power. Very nice. Oh! Wow, they just immediately go to war with us, huh? Well then. Well, a land war against Japan wasn't in the cards for this campaign, in my opinion. Um, truth be told, that really puts a dent into things for us quite a bit. So I'm actually probably going to go back and see if we can uh, kind of readjust this a little bit. Oh, we read this last time, we read this last time too. How about improve the army, the Lewis M. 1936? Then the equipment of the soldiers of the revolution can never be perfect enough. Time to improve upon our tried and tested design for a mainly mainline machine gun, the RED. With the establishment of the Revolutionary Exportation Directory, we will finally be able to conduct clandestine operations to help the workers around the world in the struggle against the oppressors. Adopt new doctrines. Purge the last remains of the militias. Oh, that'll, that'll be good. Now that the military order has been changed, we need to optimize the organization of logistics, me messages, and orders, and all that small, boring stuff that wins wars. Motorized research. While tanks are good and all, somehow it seems they're becoming even more useful when infantry can actually keep up with them. Maybe we should investigate the circumstance and women soldiers. The like, equality of all comrades is necessary for the victory of the revolution. It's like, unacceptable that right now some are more equal than others. Alright, so this is where we're at right now. Um, we're taking out Insulindia. Pretty easy. We're trying to invade the Philippines, which we mostly are doing successfully starting now. We've actually sunk quite a few enemy ships. The Japanese ships aren't as strong as I thought they would be. Ooh, that's not a good idea. Uh, stay right there. Uh, for now. Um, let's see. And yeah, we've been doing pretty decently overall. Let's see. You guys do that. You guys do that. Carrier, heavy hull, cruiser hulls. Nice. Uh, we could use an updated cruiser hull here, though. Advanced carrier, advanced carrier. It is 1941, of course. And what do we got down here? Nothing. Yay. Like cruiser battery too. So we got to research more. Sonar. It's good for that. Out radar. Yes, please. Level 3, 2, boom. Boom, boom. Black cruiser batteries, aircraft. Um, there you go. And anti air. Sure, that's all we can do for now. It's fine. Cool. Here, last one. Thank you very much. But we're doing some focuses too. So you see, we're, we're invading. We're close to Bangkok. The Japanese have been invading and trying to attack as much as possible, though. The Republican Air Force. Air power is critical for success in the modern battlefield. Currently, our air service is subordinate to our army, while that assures democratization. An independent air force will certainly be more effective. Thus, we must establish an air force of both independent and socialist, or <clears throat> paternal autocratic character. Light bomber research. While control of the skies is essential, what good is an air force if it is not assisted men on the ground? Light bombers, both specialized for direct support and destruction of our targets, will our troops fight that much more effectively. Fighter research. They may, may focus on bomber research, but what good are improved payloads if only hit the ground together with a burning bomber? New pilot training. Pilot training. And in any, many nations, including our own, has been largely non-standard, and relying on enthusiasts turned instructors. By consulting with prominent pilots, we can develop an effective training regimen. Aviation Field Administration. Without fuel. It does not matter how skilled our pilots are, it's likely that when our war uh, comes, our fuel imports will be cut off, so we must work towards domestic sources of fuel. For the safety of the revolution, we mustn't depend on capital suppliers of oil they can't be trusted. Women's Flying Corps. Capable pilots are always in short supply, and the women of our nation, whose support was so crucial to the success of the revolution, yearn for the freedom of the skies. Well, certainly proved controversial, we've drafted a plan to create women to serve in the RAF to support rules to free up more men from combat. So, let that town go on real quick here, real quicky, quickity, quickity, and hey, there's people here. No, well, not for long. We've been slowly modernizing everything. We've got some marines here to use as well, and they'll be very, very good. Um, ooh, cancel it. There you go. Very nice. Good job, guys. So I want you. Uh, I don't want you. I guess I can't pile drive all you guys on here. Uh, but yeah, we're using motorized. I can't speak, can I? Tanks, medium tanks. The Northumbrian rats. Uh, not there then. There. Because we can't land too many guys here right now. So uh, there, we'll be fine too. In the meantime, we're gonna put some more guys here. Boom. Uh, definitely put some there. That's fine. Maybe an airbase. Maybe two planes. 
Uh, Southern Sumatra, we are good. We do no longer need that. Rayong. Oh, I guess I'll improve that for now. And we're done building stuff here, but honestly, not really. There we go. Uh, well, look, we sunk 12 enemy destroyers. Very nice. Hello. You're not allowed to lose. Oh, you're going back in. Yeah, you better. Um, aviation unions. Many syndicates around Britain operate with small aerodromes for a variety of purposes. The larger the facility should be given state funding for expansion. Enjoy the skies. For thousands of years, Britain could rely on the sea to keep it safe from any invaders. For the first time, we have to confront the real possibility of an airborne invasion. But we were rely on a doctrine well tested. Simply put as many as the next two together. More fighters, more bombers. Air Observer Corps. While London was terrorized throughout the Valkyrie by German airships, relatively little damage was done by these raids. Since then, however, the range and payloads of aircraft has greatly increased. To counter the threat, we should create a volunteer organization which looks vigilantly for enemy planes, the forewarn or interceptor, and anti aircraft teams. Expand air unions. A program of aerodrome air enlargement was of great benefit to the expansion of the Republican Air Force, but proved to be a substantial administrative burden. With the Air Force now well established, the air union program could be expanded, and radar. A new technology by the name of radar could help us avoid suffering what we want to inflict on our enemies. The retirement of a national hero. Early this morning, Lord Protector Hobart announced his resignation from his post and his exit from public life. Citing old age in the streets, or the stress that comes from running a nation, General Hobart plans to spend his remaining years in the quiet solitude, along with his wife and daughter. To place Hobart as Lord Protector is his longtime friend T.E. Lawrence, as Hobart promised him to join him and join forces with him. As his first act as Lord Protector, Lawrence wished Hobart well and granted Hobart the noble title Viscount of Fonheim, a title created just for Hobart as legitimate heirs, as a show of gratitude for his liberating Britain from social tyranny. He goes, Hero, well, you know what? We got Hobart. Well, why not? T.E. Lawrence? Thomas Edwards Lawrence. Out of government, more political power, more stability. Sure, why not? Look at this guy. The Lord Protector. Welcome aboard. As you can see, we've actually done quite well here. Um, I hate that the Dutch Ostasian just kept taking back of their own territory from the Okopra Spirits here, which really sucks. Took out Siam. Pretty good. Um, took out the Philippines. Took out Taiwan. And we're going to try to invade these areas here next. So, oh, goodbye, Percy Hobart. Goodbye. Man, you must have really been stressed out doing all those different jobs. Jeez. Well, I had a tough job. Anyway. So let's see if we can naval invade. I don't think we can actually naval invade the islands of, islands of Japan, but we'll see. And, uh, shelves. We're not really using subs too much. So we're going to go over here next. If we don't land on the home islands successfully, well, that's, that's alright. It happens. But we'll see. Uh, okay. And there you go. Nice job. Can y'all win the battles here, maybe? 86, 87? Oh, yes, you can. You're going to force the attack, too. Especially, we've landed in the south as well, so we're going to start spreading out. And we're going to start putting a port here, too. Oh, is that... Is there an actual port here? No, there's not. Come on, land, 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 land. Yes. Very good. We've landed all across here. Fantastic. Let's get them on. Did not think I'd be invading Japan in this episode. Or at all, really. Are they? What is going on here? Alright, so we expanded the air unions, and we're pretty much done with all the focuses at this point. Except for women soldiers. I've just been waiting to do that one since I don't want to lose consumer goods factors. Ah, Fukuoka. Good, 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 and should be there in a second. <clears throat> good. Oh, hello. Thank you over here. Good. Advanced arty. Very nice. Better anti air. Hello, what happened here? So we lost three and three subs. Really, destroyer for thirteen destroyers. It's not bad. Anything else? Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. We're still attacking here because I need time to build up the port here. So even if we like get attacked, we can still reinforce and whatnot. So. You guys, just gonna hang out here. That's fine. Maybe the rest of y'all do this. 
you to do this too. Military police is good. And uh, more military police? Sure. We're still using the home guard for this garrison stuff, so. It's fine. Doesn't matter to us too much. Oh, actually, all three of you need to do this. Nice. Get some spare ships in reserve just in case. Let them, let them attack us here, that's fine. And send you guys over here too. Hmm. We're going from here to here. From there here to there. Cut off Fuquoa. And let them keep attacking us too. Not sure how strong Japan actually is, really. It's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Anything else here? Advance Artie. Very nice, very nice. Let them attack us still. That's fine. And boom, 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 boom. How much? Let's see. We've not done this at all, which is kind of a bad thing from us, but whatever. He's also a spy and the head of state. Go figure. Let's see. So, really, they still got quite a few ships. Um, hi, it was annexed. If we could destroy the amount of fuel that they have, would be probably the most important thing. Fall of Atlanta. Goodbye, Atlanta. Ah, they're actually attacking us. Look at that. Very good. Well, it looks like we're going to be here for quite a while. Um, and they'll probably be, be with the rest of the Japanese. I don't know. We'll see what actually happens. I, don't, I wonder if there's any event like if you actually fully annex everything. Maybe, maybe not. So, um, And other news, too. Uh, let's get through this stuff first. Uh, production stuff. Let's get some more political power first. Um, we did have an Irish uprising, uh, but then... A half of Ireland rebelled in Connacht and Munster, and then I had these four divisions that are still stationed at home. Uh, just kind of hang out and kill them off. So now the cores. We got rid of all the Irish rabble rousers. And so now we have even more of Japan under our <coughs> heel, boot. But uh, they're not doing so well. I actually have a lot of divisions from Transmure, which uh, they're doing alright, I guess. Are they fighting the Russians? No? Okay, whatever. Uh, regardless, we're doing quite well, as you can see. Uh, I've consolidated some of our armies together. I've actually lost a couple divisions here and there over... Uh, you know, at various points, but uh, overall, we're doing all right. <clears throat> so let's take a look. See, boom, boom, boom. Air Force is doing all right. Oh, I'm out of convoys. Oops, as my voice cracks. Oh God, what the heck is wrong with me? Yeah, I suppose we should make some convoys, shouldn't we? Um, we are out of this. We're importing down, extracting down, inside an enigma. He did it. The expletive. He did it. Our leading scientists are cited in today's papers. The small project of this Turing over time is going to a whole village near the former cottage of Bletchley Park. It's finally seen success. <clears throat> He's constructed a strange machine called Putting. Out of the Yorkshire Putting, Turing was enjoying when he had the idea that revolutionized cryptography. For the first time, military encryption and decryption are conducted by machine. Let's look at the Union, an important edge in any military conflict. In order, it's an extraordinary accomplishment. What's going on here? Why are we down here? What the heck is going on? Well, though. Alright. Hey, look, an encirclement. That's not bad. And they'll be dead soon. Help them all out. By helping them all out, I mean just kill them all off. Mechanize is fine. Um, uh, a lot of stuff. Actually, we've got more than enough stuff here, actually, really. Proof close air support and we're armored cars, planes. Maintenance companies are good. It's course 1943, I'll be honest. Um, since we focus all. <coughs> excuse me. Did all the focuses. I'm kind of like. I'm kind of done with this campaign. So, once Japan is dead, well, I'm just click a button and then. Uh, yeah, you'll see what happens and see what, what the whole thing is like with. Uh, Reclaiming the Cold Coast, running up our from Cape to Cairo, reclaim our Pacific possessions and whatnot. So, oh, please don't make him break over. Please, for the love of God, tell us we can break over. I don't want to have to wait here forever. 
just to get Sapporo. Sapporo. How many days do we have to wait? Uh, 25 is not terrible, but oh, maybe we don't have to wait. The guys are doing okay overall. So, and boom, boom, boom. Advanced ship torpedoes. Ah, never mind. We don't have to wait. Great. We're going to take all I am. And these guys. And these guys, too. Okay, never mind. We don't have that much here to collect. Boom, boom. Take Port Arthur. You know, just our claims. Just normal claims. Brahma, you get nothing. You do not do enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll take whatever's left of the Navy. She actually blew up quite a few uh, Japanese ships. Pretty good. Cool. I really did not think I was going to go to war with <clears throat> all the way over here. You never know all these campaigns around. Also, Yugoslavia formed. Look at that. The Federation of Southern Slavs. Not even Yugoslavia. Under Tito. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Wait, so Federation of Southern Slavs, and then the Dona Adria Bund. That is unique. And then the Russian Labor Republic. Radical Socialism under Lev Gerstein. So I've got a couple interesting things here, but, oh, because follow Berlin. Um, could have allied with them, I guess. Movements in Orkney and Shetland. The islands of Shetland and Orkney have been seen a great deal of Canadian naval vessels passed within the vicinity. Raising alarm bells along the island, but the Canucks may be planning something in the regions. Two islands normally under our control have been occupied by the British since the Revolution, however, they lack significant presence due in part to the rebellious locals and are blocked by the Danish Navy. While it's even unlikely, the possibility that the Canadian Navy may be moving to seize the island exists. Curious, but, oh, oh look at that, that really sucks for them. Huh, the car is still there, but, hey, you know what, I think my finger is going to slip. Oh, no, like I said, my finger slipped, and now we own the entire world. Oh, what could have possibly done that? But let's talk about the Ha, Lord Ha knows no more. Today's British troops enter Bucharest with a special target on their list. Along with the names of the prominent exiles, William Joyce, otherwise known as Lord Ha Ha, had been confirmed to be still in the city. As every stone is turned uh, over and every ruin thoroughly calm, the inevitable comes to pass. William Joyce is found in a small tunnel, tunnel under a hut. After moving some carefully placed debris, they found Joyce laying feet first on his back in a hole buried big enough for himself. Through a combination of poking with bayonets, warning shots, and a fair amount of digging, Joyce is finally pulled from his hiding place after three hours of work. The most prominent national leader in exile, now back in British hands. And Joyce has come to the government. On one hand, Joyce could be afforded the same rights given to every prisoner, political or not, a court martial. Not only would this would legitimize his assured death sentence, it would let the government state their case against his descent and a traitor. Some, however, fear that he could use the inevitable media circus as a loudspeaker for his radical views. Otherwise, we could just have him shot out of hand. But the war in Romania has been fierce while instructions were given. No, no commander could possibly hope to manage his men. What should be done? Prove ourselves better than him, have him tried. It was killed trying to escape. Yeah, no one will ever figure that out. So, uh... Mm, yeah, no one's gonna figure that out. So, no, we're gonna form the Commonwealth. Oh, no, we're gonna reintegrate Egypt and the Gold Coast and uh, reintegrate British Africa and the refitting the crown with India. We sort of presence in the Americas, of course. We reform our Pacific presence. North Island, New South Wales. And then there's Integrated Canada as well, so, oh no, what whatever happened? How could this have happened? Oh no. I'm sorry, I just, with this campaign, I've been playing a lot of it off-screen, just trying to invade through Japan and whatnot, so, you know, it is what it is, but, I don't know, I'm getting kind of bored, and I want to maybe move on, you know. With all the focus is done, there's no more story, and I like stories, you know, you know, whatever, it is what it is. Yeah, fate of a lot of different countries here, and then what? The sign of the domain of the Lord Protector. In the wake of the first Lord Protector, <clears throat> Oliver Cromwell, or Percy Hobart, or maybe T. Lawrence, has consolidated his rule over the Isles and has liberated the Canadian people from the spineless House Windsor. With the decadent rule finally in the spin of history, the Lord Protector must foster a new identity free from the retainer of the monarchy. The idea of an Imperial Federation compromising the former British colonies has always held merit within many political advocates within the former Empire. To foster a sense of unity between the Commonwealth and the former colonies, Lord Protector proposed adapting the ideals of the Imperial Federation into an Imperial Protectorate that spans the entire world, free from the clutches of the House of Windsor. Some hard-headed uh, members of the Hobart's old guard, however, view this idea of a reimagined federation as a fruitless endeavor. This proposal should say exactly that. We should unite the former British Empire under the new protectorate. Pursue our goals without the failed federation. Uh, that's alright, we can do this one. So now we'll be considered as the Imperial Protectorate. You know, if you do this legitimately, why not? So, um, 
Like I said, I just kind of got tired of this. I don't see there's anything else here for these next two weeks. I don't think there is, so. <clears throat> but I apologize for using consequences for this, but, you know. At some point, you're just kind of like, well, I snake my way all the way around to Southeast Asia. You go up to East Asia, take out Japan. And as great as that is, I don't want to take out the giant, like, Russian Federation by itself, or the whatever red it was, and then the Entente by itself. That just takes so much extra time off screen, especially without any extra story. So, um, that's pretty much why. But, I looks like there's nothing else here. So, hey, if you enjoy the campaign, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.